Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tony's Time. Tony George, Doug Upstone. We're talking uh, the FedEx Cup playoffs in golf here. The PGA Tour heads to Olympic Fields Country Club in Illinois here. And, of course, most recently, Olympic Fields had the uh, 2003 U.S. Open where Jim Furyk won. Bryson DeChambeau won the 2015 U.S. Amateur here. And in 2017, Danielle Kang won the Women's PGA Championship here. A storied golf course, Doug, and a very difficult golf course from all indications, as I hear uh, it's going to be uh, – Pretty bad news if you get in the rough this week, week off the tee box. So uh, a little bit of driving accuracy and a lot of scrambling for a lot of guys, Doug, uh, this week at Olympic Fields. Yeah, that's for sure, Tony. And uh, and if I might go on a, a, a modest uh, diatribe, uh, last week's 30 under by Dustin Johnson. Uh, if this is supposed to be the playoffs of golf, that is a that's an embarrassment to the PGA Tour. Okay. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous yeah. that a guy, I mean, you know, anybody, you know, it can happen. Okay. It's happened before, uh, but 30 under, I mean, I don't care how good the guy's playing. That should not be the case. And I just, I saw no value in that at all. And it's another example of the PGA tour players have too much power in, in terms of the whole, you know, ramifications of how the play, how it's run. And it's, it's ridiculous. You know, so anyway, so enough about that. Yes, to your point, it, this week should be fantastic for real golf fans that want to see these guys have to sweat a little bit, have to put a little extra effort. I mean, this golf course is set up really, I it, really uniquely. Now, I've never been to uh, to uh, Olympic fields, but I have been to Medina and does uh, pretty much the same setup. And from that standpoint. A lot of the uh, there's a creek that runs through the entire golf course that is set up to where it's difficult to place your shots and for big hitters the waters would be into play on the I think it's seven holes that it comes in in there there's a ton of traps and they're not just traps that are just there for cosmetics they're there to get golf balls okay they're there they're placed there purposely how they and how they used to build golf courses and so I think that's another great feature about this one. I'm excited about it. Takes taking the bombers out of this baby. Got to hit irons. You got to hit the ball below the hole. That's going to be another key is hitting the ball below the hole. Because if you get above the hole in these greens, good luck. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you mentioned last week in 30 under, you had a relatively unknown, you know, young kid on the tour shoot 59 on the yes. day that Dustin Johnson shoots 60. Um I mean, it, it's uh, it's come to fruition that the advancement in technology with golf clubs um, and golf balls um, has caught up to a lot of these storied older courses. Um, although last week that course is not all that old. That course is only 18 years old. They built that in the prime time of Tiger. You know, when he was launching at 330, 340, 350 off the box when nobody else was scratching 300, you know, uh, back when Tiger was unbeatable. But uh, I think this week, it's interesting you bring that up. 30 under, uh, as a golfer, uh, I don't know how you can shoot 30 under on a PGA setup tournament course as a golfer, personally. I, I don't know how somebody can go fire that number four straight days, but... That being said, interesting because the over and under here out of Westgate uh, on the final score in this particular tournament is 10 and a half under. So they're expecting uh, a, a lot different style of course here. And of course, this week, you're going to have to look at driving accuracy. Length is going to get you nothing if you're not accurate. You know, the DeChambeau's of the world and these big bombers, you know, Dustin Johnson, but Dustin Johnson was splitting fairways last week. You know, that's why he won that tournament. He was bombing it out there 300 yards, splitting fairways. And on on, on uh, holes where he had to shape shots, Doug, you know, he used his three wood and worked on his power fade or even a draw to put it in position. And if it was even tighter than that, he was hitting irons. And I think you'll see a lot of these big hitters this week take chance out of the equation 
by hitting those driving irons, which they can hit 250 yards, you know, off the tee box this week. But that's one thing I think you need to look at this week when you are um, taking a look at um, your handicapping, which, by the way, I went 7-1-1 one, and one last week with my handicapping and over $2,000 to the good. Uh, for the tournament last week. And uh, bear in mind, we had that free $60 up there in the top of the uh, uh, page here. And of course, in the description and the link below, um, I am going to have my head-to-head -head matchup of the year on Thursday. The only eight unit pick I will have in golf all year. We're, you know, we only put out one kind of what they call game of the year, Doug, which is kind of a oxymoron to a lot of people, but at Doc Sports, we really mean them. You know, you're not allowed, you know, to put them out all, the, you see these all the time, but this here is a complete mismatch in a cheap line. I hope the line is still holding tomorrow morning, but nonetheless, I think here, uh, this is going to be a tournament, Doug, and I think you would agree. Driving accuracy, total overall driving is a key stat. I think scrambling is going to be a key stat um, in this in this uh, particular course and setup as well. And also, I think you're going to see the cream of the crop rise to the top. I don't think you're going to see, you know, well, you've going you've only got seventy golfers in it and only thirty advanced to next week in Atlanta for the finale. So you're going to see the best of the best you know, and their A game this week. And uh, those with big names that aren't playing well are not going to rise to the top. So that's a couple of takes I have there, Doug. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I agree with you. You know, it was interesting last week too. And now as opposed to you, I had a four week winning streak. It was snap last week. So four out of five, take it, take it as it comes. Now, the, the one of the things that I got caught on last week was the players that were secure already to, to be in this field, they were, they just went through the motions. Some of the guys didn't even make yeah. the cut last week. And so yeah. there's a couple of guys that, that I'm looking at, and to be perfectly honest, I give uh, Webb Simpson plenty of credit for this, as opposed to just showing up and going through the motions, he's playing next week, okay? What, what, why, uh, why beat yourself up? Prepare for next week. Good for him. I, I applaud Webb Simpson for that. Some of the guys last week that that did that just showed up and just didn't even make the cut. You know what? Uh, you know, it, I'm not saying golf isn't the only sport. It happens in tennis all the time. Sometimes it happens in the NBA more often than it should. But the fact of the matter is, it did happen. And so this week, you got to be careful. You got to see those who are looking to advance. To you know, the guys are maybe that are in that uh, in the 30s. Okay. Pretty much, those guys they're gonna they're gonna bring their best game. Maybe they don't deliver it, you know. Maybe they do, but the, some of the guys maybe in the top ten have to be careful. That's at least that's my opinion. I, I, I'm not saying that any of them can't win it. You know, the John Roms, the Justin Tom, uh, Justin Thomases, and uh, uh, Dustin Johnsons, all of them can win this tournament if they play their best. You have to ask yourself though, will they? Yeah, you take a look at the odds. Dustin Johnson, fifteen to two. John Rahm, ten to one. DeChambeau, twelve to one. Thomas, thirteen to one. Roy McIlroy, eighteen to one. Webb Simpson, twenty to one. Shoffley, twenty to one. Morikawa, twenty-two to one. Berger, twenty-two to one. Keep your eye on him. Jason Day, thirty-two to one, and Patrick Reed, thirty-two to one. Um, that that's kind of the leaderboard right now in terms of winning the tournament, but. At the end of the day, my, my question is, Roy McIlroy, why? How is he in the top 10 of contenders to win this tournament? Um, as a matter of fact, a top 10, he is plus 135. Why? What has <laughs> hit? He has been terrible around the greens. He has been terrible with putting. He is uh, inconsistent off the tee box. And if you are inconsistent off the tee box, I don't give a rat's ass if you can hit an eight iron 200 yards or not. If you're in five inches of rough on this golf course, it's like a U.S. Open. You're not going to get it to the green from 165 out with a seven iron in your hand. 
no matter how good a shape you're in, no matter how strong you are, um, no matter, and McElroy is a strong iron player and hits it a long way, snaps his irons, um, great golf swing, no doubt. Um, DeChambeau, same thing. Big, strong guy now, added 30 pounds, added a lot of length. You get in this rough, it'll make a mortal man out of you, Doug. I don't understand the love for Roy McIlroy in this tournament, you know, and I don't think he went through the motions last week. He was on the cut line. He was playing in a lot of the last, second, third, fourth, last of groups, you know, uh, on, on the weekends and didn't play all that well. And uh, to me, for a guy, if he's going through the motions, as you suggest, and, and I agree with, um, the look of frustration on his face last week told me the story. He was trying. He just not, he's not dialed in in any single aspect of his game. If you look at the tournament stats, he ranked near the bottom on everything last week. Yep. Yeah, you know, and, so, the, and he admitted after after the tournament that, you know, he said, I my head, he goes, I'm just not there right now. And he goes, I'm looking yeah. for it. I'm trying to find it, but I just haven't been able to, t can't get it back. And that's why, you know, whether it be, you know, I mean, why is he up there? I mean, I we both know the real answer to that, Tony, is that people will bet on him because he's Rory McIlroy. You know, he, he was the number one player in the world basically for a few years there. And so people are going to bet him. Does he deserve to be there? We also, right now, do we know that answer too? I would say we do. And he, he does not. His game is, is basically, as you said, it's a kind of a mess. And at this golf course, now the I looked up the 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 uh, when they had the U.S. Open there, you know, 17 years ago, the U.S. Amateur and a couple other events that were there. And the what that showed is that if you are not on the green in regulation, so either if you're either on the rough or in the sand trap, you, it's less than 50 percent chance on a par four or a par five that you will get a par forget forget birdie you're going to get a par so less than 50 percent chance so it, it you know if if your game is not strong and you're not being able to scramble right now a guy like roy mcelroy to me whoo good luck on that one yeah and and uh last week you saw tiger missing greens left and right on a fairly easy course um and he is a top 10 here at like plus 110 you know, looks attract. You know, to me that number's. I mean, you ought to be getting plus four hundred. Um, I don't know. I think you're wasting money on Tiger Woods. I think you're wasting money on Roy McIlroy this week. You know, um, but, but let's talk about let's talk about some picks where you're not wasting your money. And uh, I'm just going to go one guy. I think is going to have a fantastic tournament here. Um. And uh, my best bet of the week, I got two best bets a minute, Daniel Berger. I've been talking about Daniel Berger nonstop since year, this year started. Um, he's been one of the most consistent guys on the leaderboard all year long. Tony Fanot is another one. Yeah, of course, Tony can't put a win to bed where Berger can. Um, um, his game is built for this course. Uh, he's a fantastic off the tee box. Uh, he's got a strong iron game, greens and regulations, scoring average, birdie average, you name it. He's in the top 25 in almost every category that counts. He can putt his brains out. Um, the one thing I notice about him, too, especially in these tournaments, like, you know, you get him in the RBC or some of these other tournaments where ball position on the green is key. Like this course, if you, if you go long, you're screwed. You know, and you got some false fronts here you got to worry about, but getting it, you know, pin seeking. You're going pin seeking. If you want to go pin seeking, you know he's he's one of the guys that's going to be putting it on the pin, kind of like Webb Simpson. Another one, he puts it on the pin. If he's making putts, he's a very dangerous cat. You know, and I think him in the top ten plus one fifty is golden. Um, top twenty, you get him at minus one twenty, golden. I saw a matchup. Daniel Berger for the tournament over Roy McElroy, minus 118, golden. Roy McElroy and Berger over Jason Day. I'm going all in on Daniel Berger. He's my man. Berger, minus 135 over Jason Day for the tournament. I gave you a tournament pick last week. Uh, Justin Thomas over Roy McElroy. Free on this, on, on this thing. 
no brainer. Winner, winner, chicken freaking dinner. Uh, but uh, I'm going big there. And one other one I did like, top 20, who I think is laying up. And I thought he is sharpening his game. That's going to make some noise on this tournament. That's Kevin Kistner. I thought Kistner had a good tournament last week. And if you can get him at a top 20 at plus plus right now, 125, I think that's a good wager. That's how I see it this week, uh, Mr. Upstone. I'm uh, big on Daniel Berger this week. So let's hope he stays healthy, stays out of the crick, stays out of that rough. And if he does, he's going to be in the conversation come Sunday because we're not going to have a guy with a seven-stroke lead come Sunday. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But, geez, all, all this talk about burgers, uh, how about some hot dogs too, Tony? I mean, come on, just burger, burger, burger. Yeah. I got an appetite now just listening to you talk. But I agree with you 100% on, on burger. You know, I mean, the guy is just, he's hes a machine. He's consistent. And he's just, and he doesn't make mistakes. That's the big thing. You know, the, when, when he, if he misses a green, he doesn't, he's not buried He's, he's in a uh, uh, applicable position where he can do something with the next shot. So that's another uh, key for me here. Uh, I actually also, uh, on that same line, I like uh, Justin Thomas for top five. Uh, I've used him a couple different times this year, and I like him some of the daily, uh, excuse me, well, daily and tournament head-to-heads. Uh, plus 200 for uh, top five. I, I definitely like him. The top 20, though, is an interesting uh, deal this week because, again, we only have 70 golfers and we have a lot of good players. And 18, the, the, I should say the top 18 are even money or less. Now, that yeah. hasn't happened all year. So, yeah. you know, you, to be selective, you know, you mentioned Berger at minus 120. I'm not a big fan of, of minus on for any of these guys uh, on this stuff. I understand that, you know, the rationale for Berger, certainly, you know, in, in this case. Um, in this, though, I'm looking at maybe like a Gary Woodland. Now, Woodland hasn't played great lately, but he's in the top 50 in a lot of good categories. So he's with birdie average, scoring average, driving distance, driving accuracy, and he's at plus 180. So I think he's kind of an interesting pick here for a, uh, a top 20. Uh, one guy that uh, we mentioned, McElroy, I have another guy that who looks like the, uh, he needs a week off too, it would, it would be Paul Casey. Uh, I would not yeah. look at Paul Casey in any way, shape or form. I believe this is either his seventh or straight, seventh or eighth straight week playing. And he looked just absolutely worn out last week after the, you know, after the PGA championship. And so I, I'm just not sure what he's got left in the tank coming into this week. Yeah, I think those are some good picks there. Um, and as we do every week, your thoughts, I get your thoughts on a couple of players here. Um, number one is uh, Dustin Johnson. We haven't mentioned his name. He absolutely lapped the field last week. Um, we all know how talented he is. Um, if he's getting in the fairway off the tee box, um, you never have to worry about his iron game. He had his irons dialed in last week as good as anybody I've seen in the last month. He was all over every pin. This guy was throwing darts all over the course. And uh, he was spending a lot of time reading putts and making a lot of 10 to 8 foot putts. Not only for birdie, but a couple of them there. A lot of those greens were almost 13 on a stint meter. And he made a lot of five foot putts for par. Uh, that are just as important as birdie putts. Um, and he stayed, I thought, completely focused and dialed in with a huge lead to make a statement. I don't think that you can count him out of this tournament at all. And But like you said, you're paying huge minus money for him. Even in a top five, top ten, you think it's worth the stretch with him. Could he go back to back in that sort of form right now? Well, you know, the here's I got two thoughts on him, and and I, I've wrestled with this uh, since because I knew we were going to do this, and I, in fact, I wrote about this in the article at, at Doc Sports about this about this tournament. There are two trains of thought on on, on Dustin Johnson this week. Um, when he's won a tournament, and he's played again within three weeks in his next tournament, he he has three wins and three top excuse me six top tens out of his last 10 wins. 
So nine out of the nine out of the ten times that he has followed up a a wit a victory, he's come back and finished in the top ten. So that's pretty impressive to say the least. Um, yeah. So, so you got a lot there. The question though that I have about him is, and this is the point I brought up earlier. He's he's already guaranteed a spot for next week. He has no worries. He's the number one player in yeah. golf this week. So mm -hmm. does he bring his A game or does he back it off a little bit, try to have a good tournament and prepare more for Atlanta than this week? I don't really yeah. have a great answer. I'm more inclined to say that he's a top 10 guy, but to win, that's that's really a little tougher one for me. Yeah, I agree with you. I. I you know, the, the FedEx Cup championships were $10 million. Yep. And that comes next week in Atlanta. And um, that's the big prize. You know, um, you could take a, uh, you could take the podium this week in a top 10 and be completely satisfied knowing you're going to be in one of the top three golfers heading into Atlanta, depending on who wins this week. A couple of guys behind him could win it take him out of the point position because it all it's all about points when it comes down to the overall championship. Who wins that tournament next week in Atlanta doesn't necessarily win the FedEx Cup. As you recall, Tiger Woods a couple of years ago won the tournament finale in grand fashion with looked like a British Open back in the 70s with everybody rushing the course. And yet Justin Rose walked away with the $10 million the same day. Um, so um, Thomas is going to have his eye or not Thomas, but um, Johnson's going to have his eye on the overall prize next week. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs. But it's awfully tough to follow up a minus 30 round. I mean, if you shoot, if they're projecting this at 10 and a half under on the over and under in Vegas to wager the final score for the winning score, um, how disappointed are you going to be when you just shot 30 under and you only go six deep for four days? I mean, what's the mindset going to be? So there's a lot of different things at play here this week. Um, your free pick, though, what would out, out of your plays that you have the leans on, what would be your best bet here this week? Uh, well, I, I, in terms of just overall, I mean, I, I would say I agree with you 100% on Berger. OK, I mean, I, and you can you can bet him multiple ways. I think there's there's a number of things you can go with. Uh, I also agree with you is that look for uh, head to heads with Rory McIlroy and go against him. I think that there's a there's a number of, of good ones here. And another guy I'll throw out there that uh, to keep an eye on, especially now it's it's only even money uh, on a top 20, but English. OK, for a top yeah. 20, um, he, he's finished. Uh, in the top 10, I believe nine of his last 10 tournaments. And, yeah. he, oh, by the way, he was only 20 under, finished 11 shots back, and was second last week. <laughs> yeah. So, he, so that's, uh, a guy, that's another guy to keep an eye on. He played extremely well on Sunday with that final score. The way he played on Sunday, nine out of 10 times, he'd win a golf tournament. Right. And uh, he ha and he has been in the hunt. He's been in the hunt in some big tournaments um, this year, Memorial, a couple others. He's had a lot of good finishes, PGA Championship. He's got a game built for this course. He's very steady off the tee box. He's got he's deceptively long. Uh, if you watch his swing, it's kind of like Ernie Els, just that big long gait and smooth as smooth as you know a hot knife on butter. Uh, coming through the ball. Um, if he's putting well, he's very dangerous. I don't think he lost any confidence last week. He ran into a guy last week in the final round that simply was just from another planet, the way he was playing last week and making a statement. And Dustin Johnson uh, um, finished, I think, when he limped home and when he won the Travelers, when he limped home there and barely got that win at the Travelers, he was going to make doubly sure that didn't happen last week at the Northern Trust. And he and he for sure slammed the door early in that round and kept his foot on the throttle, you know, much like a Tiger performance back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Just kept his foot right on your throat and, you know, taking no prisoners and eating all the wounded approach, for lack of a better term. My best bet this week, 
you know, is Berger with, with along with Doug Upstone in the top 10 at uh, plus 150, I think, which is a very good number. Also, Kevin Kistner in the top 20, plus 120. And as I said, uh, a couple of different head-to-head -head tournament matchups. Jason Day is not going to hold up. Jason Day's back will definitely not hold up if he gets in this rough a lot. Because uh, <laughs> trying to get a club through that rough, you're going to hurt your back. And it happens to a lot of people. As well as uh, Berger over McElroy around minus 118 for tournament head-to-head. -head. It's going to be a great golf tournament. It's going to be a great weekend. We got NASCAR in Daytona. Uh, we've got uh, the NBA playoffs, which I'm absolutely destroying at 7 out of 22. I know that Doug Upstone is on an epic NHL run right now. Uh, you've been killing it in the hockey leagues. Uh, so, folks, uh, take advantage of the free 60 bucks. Get over to Docs. There's a ton of free information over there, free plays, free play videos, um, free play write-ups, not to mention – we got six or seven guys doing daily free pick videos for you. Lots of how-tos, lots of great articles, all geared towards helping you make better decisions. If you're watching a handicapping video, that means you like winning money. We got 95% of the stuff over that website for free to help you win money. And when you can't get over the hump, you got guys like me and Doug Upstone and, and 10 other guys over there that are the best in the industry. Get over, check it out, DocSports.com, PGA this weekend. For Doug Upstone, I'm Tony George. Thanks for tuning in.